I will be doing a video on this and telling you all about the gentleman who designed this Japanese hand. Hello folks, and welcome to another jam-packed episode of the Art of Engineering. In today's episode, we are going to look at the construction, or at least the prototyping, of a DDS VFO. Now, DDS stands for Direct Digital Synthesis, and VFO stands for a Variable Frequency Oscillator. So basically, it's a way of creating different frequencies. I'll just turn that down. Oh, that's so noisy. It's just a way of creating uh, different frequencies uh, rather than being locked to a single frequency like you would be if you were using a crystal locked rig. From a home brewer's perspective, the DDS VFO is a godsend. Anyway, enough from me. Let's get on with the, uh, the build. Well, of course, the inspiration for this was Mr. Carlson's lab. Anyone that doesn't know about this fantastic YouTube channel, I will put a link below to the channel. And in this episode, he was repairing the RCA CR88 secret listening post receiver from the 1940s. And let me tell you, this receiver, even by today's standards, performs amazingly well. And you can see on the front of this receiver, you have these beautiful old school uh, dial VFO. And so that's the sort of VFO that I want to emulate in a few of my upcoming QRP projects. And here you have it, folks. This is all the parts that go into that miraculous retro style analog slash digital DDS VFO you just saw at the beginning of this video. Can it get any more simple than this? You've got your TFT 1.8 inch uh, 128 by 160 screen, ESP32 uh, development board, one of these SI5351A clock chips, rotary encoder, few momentary action switches, two 2.2 kilo ohm resistors. In this case, I've had to series a couple up because I couldn't find a 2.2. And of course, a linear three pin. I think that's a 7805. Can't remember the number for it, but yeah, linear five volt DC regulator and a 10 micro farad capacitor for a bit of filtering on the supply. And that is it. Now, please note, I'm saying this is a simple, okay, I can do shadow puppets here. I'm saying this is a simple VFO, but when you think about it, you know, there's probably 5 trillion transistors on this thing, this development board. It's even got native uh, Wi-Fi on it. So I'm, I'm amazed by that. This clock chip here, it's got three outputs. Absolutely incredible. So there's a huge amount of technology here. But with the maker's movement, uh, the availability of uh, an Arduino IDE to program it, libraries written by people that are so much more smarter than I am, uh, we have the opportunity to build really quite high-tech stuff that's really simple to build. Well, at least I'm hoping it's simple to build. Stick around, we'll see if I manage to do it. Oh, we know I managed to do it because you saw it at the beginning of the video. Okay, well, you might be able to see how difficult or how easy it was. We started building, I needed to put some wire on these uh, momentary push button switches, and we already came up against the first problem, and that was that uh, this ESP32 development board is very, very wide, and it actually doesn't sit on these normal uh, breadboards that you buy. So what I needed to do was I had this board when I was at university and I ripped all the stuff off this. It uh, brought back very traumatic memories <laughs> of building uh, linear amplifier circuits and filters and whatnot from the last unit that I did. And uh, I basically took one of these boards that I had separate and I took the side off it and they, they actually join together. They're kind of like Lego blocks. You can join them together. And so I managed to take one part off, join it up, and that gave me the right separation to get this board on. So that's uh, got me out of trouble. So I'm gonna continue soldering my momentary action switches. We'll get this thing wired up and we'll see if we can get it working. Okay, a uh, bit of progress, not a lot of progress. I had to go and look up how to wire up a three pin regulator. This is how, naive I am on the home brewing front. So don't be surprised if this takes me a lot longer than it should, but we've got our bits and pieces on the board. We're populating the board, got our switches wired up. Our encoders already got connectors on it. 
the more bits and bobs you have for our prototyping, the more test leads and, and whatnot, and the more stuff you've got in the shack, the more likely you are to succeed, I'm starting to realize. It definitely makes life a lot easier if you don't have to stop what you're doing to go and buy something that you don't have. So um, it would be nice if I was a little bit more organized, my parts, drawers, et cetera, et cetera. And that's something that's going to need to happen, even though it's against my very nature. I am going to have to organize myself a bit better. But uh, I'm going to now, before I wire this whole thing up, because I found quite often with Arduino uh, that uh, sometimes I wire up a circuit I'll go to load the uh, the sketch onto the thing and it says get lost, nothing works and you're thinking what's going wrong, you finally unplug the damn thing from the circuit and uh, it programs no problem at all. So sometimes having the thing loaded up causes issues. Uh, so I'm going to try and make sure that I'm able to program this thing with the uh, necessary script that needs to go in it, sketch, program, whatever you want to call it and, and we'll um, be using the IDE from Arduino and we'll see if I manage to get that loaded up. I won't be showing you that whole process, but um, drop in the comment section below. If you do start building this thing and you're having issues and you'd like another video, um, I will do my best to show you, but there's so much stuff online on this stuff that's going to be done so much better than I'm going to do it. Before getting on with the video, I'd just like to say thank you to all the people that helped uh, with this project. I've written it down here. Obviously, the first uh, point of contact with this project was through Mirko Pavlevsky. Link to that video below. And then, of course, the hero of this, of course, is uh, Juliet Foxtrot 3 Hotel Zulu Bravo, the uh, Japanese ham who came up with this brilliant project, and it is brilliant. Improved by a German operator, Delta Juliet 7 Oscar Oscar. So thank you, thank you, thank you to all those people. And then Dennis, uh, radio rider, Fox 6, Charlie Rom Romeo Papa, um, really saved my bacon because after ordering all the parts for this, probably for two or three VFOs because I really like the look of it, uh, I couldn't get the damn thing to work. And so I was thinking I've done my dough. Not that it's a huge amount of uh, money spent on building this thing. It's quite cheap to build. But uh, just the time and effort that went into it was going to be very disappointing. And then I found Dennis's video and he was having the same error message that I was having and I thought we might get somewhere here. And so, Dennis, thank you, thank you, thank you for ever in debt to you as well for putting that information out there. And I will let other people know about that too. So link to that video as well if you build this thing and you have the same problem that uh, we both encountered, which was an error message, even though uh, it should have been working. I had some issues with wiring, with getting the ESP32 working, but all of that information, if you, if you look online, you will find all that information online. So it's a very doable project, even for an idiot like me. Uh, just hold on. So more um, adventures along the way. Uh, first off, the uh, cord I was originally using uh, wasn't talking to the actual microcontroller. It was a charging cable. So you've got to be very careful that you use the right cables. And now I've got a cable that's communicating. I was having some uh, driver issues. So I'm presently loading up the necessary drivers and I'm hoping that fixes things. And as you can see there, we've got our blue LED flashing at one second intervals and we had a successful upload. Well, after getting all the uh, libraries installed, and getting rid of any of the library errors, I started to get a DRAM error. And luckily, I've jumped on this site here, and I'll put a link below to this site. It's um, F6 CRP Radio Rider, um, a French operator. Thank God he's put this up. And in the bottom of the screen here, um, he's actually showing his error message. And it's a DRAM error, which is the same error that I was getting. And the way he solved this problem was basically going to a previous version of the ESP development board uh, files that need to be uploaded to the Arduino IDE. So if you follow the instructions in this video, if you're getting the same error as me, uh, you will find that uh, it fixes the problem. Now, when I went to have a look at the DRAM error message, the, the forums were all saying that the actual package cannot be modified and that it's a mem memory situation and that you'd have to get a different device with more memory. So had I just believed what I was reading, I probably would have uh, not been able to fix this situation, but I've 
dropped it back down to the uh, previous version that he recommends in this video. So I'll put a link to this video. God bless you. Uh, saved my life, I'm hoping. And so we, his name's Dennis, F6CRP. So we will build the circuit now. And if, uh, if, it's, if it all goes the same way that it went for Dennis, um, Dennis actually shows at the end of the video Sorry. his completed uh, VFO it's and impressive. it's working. So um, I will definitely link to this video. And I'm not going to explain how it's fixed because uh, Dennis does such a fine job of it. Well, folks, if I was to say that I was ecstatic, that would be a bloody understatement. <laughs> I am way more than ecstatic. A lot of challenges happened with this uh, setting up this circuit. The screen I had wasn't the same screen. I had to do a bit of research to uh, the pin out and what pins needed to be shorted to get the thing to work. Um, then when I got it all finally working, the screen came on, but the uh, VFO was jittering away. It wasn't actually moving. That was bad wiring to the uh, ESP32 microcontroller. Um, I'm going to show you how this works now. And it is getting really late. And uh, we had another problem. I had the SI5351A, the clock chip, earthed in the wrong place. In other words, it wasn't earthed. So it wasn't on. So the whole circuit worked, but it wasn't making any RF. Now, as you can see on the uh, tiny SA here, it's as dirty as all hell. Um, and that is because the um, output from this thing, especially on the lower frequencies, is nowhere near sinusoidal. So obviously it needs a little bit of filtering and whatnot that uh, needs to happen. But uh, just listen. I've got the trusty TS520 on receive and around the three uh, meg band, and we'll just have a listen as I, uh, as I tune up, and we'll see if it comes into, uh, into play. I don't know which way I need to go, actually. It needs to go up. Maybe I need to go down. Uh, so that is my beautiful analog retro VFO. So I finally got to use my tiny SA for something. Uh, well, I did get to use it when I briefly tested the bow thing before it crapped itself. That's a nice little piece of kit. And um, like I said, I'm ecstatic because I have a VFO that works now. And it's a VFO that's going to be really fun to put into a retro style rig. I've had this kit. I'll show you this side because the other side's got my address on it. Uh, from OzQRP. And OzQRP, Leon Dobbs, he's now shut down his operation. So I will be flying solo on this kit. But I'm sure I'll be okay with it because the instructions are fantastic and I have the VFO to go with it. And I'm really excited about finishing this transceiver because, like I always say, I could go and buy a store-bought rig and it's going to work better. But I don't get the excitement of building it myself and earning that band. If you haven't already, like I said, please hit the like, hit the subscribe, encourage me. And I'll be seeing you shortly in the next episode of the art of engineering, 7-3.